Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is, well, it's going to be Foundry VTT. This is Curse of Strahd. And in this video, we're going to be making the next scene for us back in the town of Velaki, Velaki, which is the Watchter House. Um, but I've been changing the way that I'm doing some of my maps, as you will be aware in the last few videos. Um, and somebody asked about, well, how are you stitching those maps together? So I'm going to start off by showing you how I'm going to stitch together rather than using Ripper's levels, as brilliant as that is, actually stitching these together. And you can see on screen at the bottom there where I've stitched together other things, the Burgomaster's House, the Blood of the Vine Tavern, the Death House, Van Richten's Tower, etc. Uh, so I am using a pixlr.com so p-i-x-l-r.com which is um well yeah you can sign up to it and you can pay for it and everything else but actually i can do what i need to do completely for free i can save up to three different things a day for free and i'm only going to save one doing this so i am going to first of all open my image and for some reason i'm automatically in storm <laughs> <laughs> don't want to be in there. I want to be in my Curse of Strahd folder, in my scenes, in my uh, Velaki, and in the, uh, what's it called? Come on, brain, you can do it. The Watchter House. All right, so here are my three, um, well, I'm not going to worry about the roof, but I've essentially got these four images here. Not going to worry about the roof, so I've got three that I want to stitch together. But I'm going to start off with the main ground floor. So let's stick this in. Now straight away it's going to ask me to, oh, well, this is a huge file. Are you sure you want to do that? This this annoys me because, stop messing with it. I want my full size image. Thank you. And there it is. Yeah, I'm not going to continue supporting you. Thank you very much indeed. So how do I now stitch another one onto this? Well, that's easy because all of these images are the same size so uh, this one here we just saw this is 5600 by 3200 pixels um, and even though the overlay for the next floor is um, is obviously only that floor it's on a tile that's exactly the same size and the same as the cellar which is actually really useful the way Anobar has done these maps is regardless of the size of the uh, the, the, the viewable image the tile size is exactly the same, which makes my life easy. So I'm going to go to crop and I'm going to change my canvas size. Now this is obviously telling me the size of the current canvas. Now I can tile left and right here, but I'm going to go down on this case. So if I basically double this, so that becomes six, four, it's going to make my canvas twice as big. Now I'm going to apply that and what you'll see is that sticks it in the middle, which is actually not what I want. So let me redo that. When I resize that canvas to uh, six four there, I can anchor it. So I'm going to anchor that one to the top. So now when I do that, it's at the top and I've got this beautiful space down the bottom. Guess what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to click add a new layer. I'm going to select and select select a new image and I'm going to pick that first floor and that's going to bring that in it's not going to put it in the right place but I am going to drag that those very useful guidelines so that I can get it perfect thank you very much and of course that means it's going to be exactly the same scale now it doesn't have the background grass if you're looking out the windows you're kind of like well I'm looking at the windows and I can't see anything right okay well let's add another image on then and let's bring in that ground floor And we're going to stick that back there, make sure it's exactly the same size. And now we've got our two different layers here, including the ground floor and this upper floor. And I can now merge these images into each other because they're just different layers. Um, now, if anybody's used to using any kind of um, anything more advanced than paint for doing images, you're probably aware of layers probably a lot more than I am. Um, but I'm an idiot and I can do it, so you'll be fine. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to merge those layers. So right-clicking on this one, I've got this wonderful thing here of Merge Visible. Um, I can also merge down. Um, I don't want to flatten an image. But if I Merge Visible, that is going to take those two layers and merge them all together 
with that top layer. So on the right hand side here, I don't have any other layers now. I've just got this one image that looks like this, which is what I want. So if you're looking out of these windows, you're looking at grass. And of course, you can just faintly see a line where the two maps meet. When we bring that into Foundry VTT, we're going to put a wall there. So from the player's point of view, they can't look out the window and see another copy of the house. That would be silly. Um, I also want to add on the cellar on here as well. So I'm going to go back to my crop. I'm going to go back to my canvas size. Uh, and then I need to add on... Uh, and again, I'm going to go, I could go either direction. We're going to go down again because I think that works better for this particular map. So if I've got um, six, four, well, half of that, that was two. So I need to add another two on. That was three. So I had another three on. <laughs> Didn't want to do that. <laughs> Nine and six. And again, anchor what I've already got at the top. So when I do that, I've got another chunk. Same again, layer, pick image, pick my next image bring that in and that is again because Aeon Bar has very uh, professionally, I think is probably the right word, um, made them all the same size. They now scale perfectly together and again, once again, I can just merge visible. I now have one single image. So I'm going to save that and it's going to suggest whether I want it as a JPEG, a PNG. It's going to want me to possibly downgrade the quality. Um, I want to make sure it stays at its original uh, original size for this. Uh, obviously, yep, so five, six thousand by three times 320, which is what my 960 is. And I can save this as a PNG, a JPEG, um, or a WebP. Now, WebP is obviously a better format for importing in. I don't need to worry about that because I've got Ripper's absolutely beautiful um, media optimizer, which just does a brilliant job. So I'm going to go back into my uh, Vileki folder into Watcher House and I'm going to save this and I'm just going to change the name Watcher House complete and uh, please ignore Brett in the bottom right hand corner. <laughs> One day I will actually remember to turn off Discord before I start. Um, and as you can see here, it goes, yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. That's successful. One of my three daily free saves has been used. So if you're doing lots and lots of maps all in a row, you might find that actually you need to do something about that um, and sign up membership. But to be honest, I don't have time to build more than three scenes in any one day. Uh, so for me, it's not an issue. All right, let's get rid of this. Boop. And we're back in Foundry. Hooray. See, I told you it was a Foundry video. Uh, so I can go to my Watcher House now. So I've got my scene already created, although obviously it hasn't got that image. I can go to my background image. I can make sure I'm in my correct folder, um, which is back in Velaki. I can choose my file and, of course, ignore the fact that I was looking at um, Forgotten Adventures maps uh, map packs there. I was looking for a cot for Van Richten's tower, which I found, and I've inserted that in the background. I want to go into my cursor strat, into my scenes, into the lackey, into the watcher house, and of course, I want to pick this new one that we've just done. So bring that in, give it a moment. There we go, for Ripper to do his thing. Um, so it came in at 37 meg, it's taken it down to about 10 meg in total. Now that's not outrageous, that's that's acceptable. Here it is. Ta da! So it's brought it in all as one nice, great big picture. Um, and as you've seen build previously, it means we can jump, we can use regions to teleport for stairs and things like that. So, first of all, we need to do a couple of these setup things, of course. Are we happy with this? Sort of. Want my backgrounds black, thank you very much. Lovely, that's better. Where do I want, when we join this scene, we're always gonna join this scene looking at this part of the map. So I'm going to just zoom to that um, and bring that in. Actually, I want to take that out a little bit. Okay, so it's gonna focus on the top part of the map when uh, the players first join. Uh, grid, as you know, especially for videos, I tend to make it red and put that grid up a bit so that we can have a play with it and sort it out. Uh, now, this might be really quick. You can see it's not aligned but it does look to be the right size. So uh, let's sort that out. If this takes too long, I will edit this bit because, uh, you know, boring. 
you guys have seen me do these things so much right so we can see lined up here it's not quite the right size is it um, now I think it's not it's not quite 75 I'm gonna have a quick fiddle with this if it takes me too long I'm gonna sack it and uh, do this without you guys watching So in case I choose to leave this in, if I can get it right fairly quickly, I am holding down shift and I'm using my scroll wheel, which is slowly shrinking the size of the image compared to the grid. And so I want that image obviously to line up. We're not too far off now. And I'm using this doorway to do it. We should be in the center of this post and the center of this post, but we're not quite there. Let's shrink that down a bit more. Still not quite there. And it's just this little adjustment. Now I know I've started trying to cut this stuff out for you guys as much as I can because you've seen me do it dozens of times before. It's boring and you all take the mic. <laughs> and we have looked at add-ons that make this much easier for us. Um, I don't have any of those installed at the moment and not all of them work in Foundry 12 now. Right, so looks good here. If I look over here, we're slightly out. I've made that image, that image still slightly too big. Sometimes it does jump like that. So we're on the middle of this wall here, and we're dead in the middle of this wall here, which is good. We're in the middle of we're in the middle of this wall here, and then if we look at a wall up here, we're in the middle of it. So that don't reset changes. Oh, I've done that a few times. That looks perfect. But what about for the other floors? Well, because we use the same scaling. Um, and because again the way anabars create these maps so if you're creating your own maps bear this in mind this lines up perfectly as well which is good and then when we look at this other one this also lines up perfectly sweet we love it when a plan comes together so this just it, again in case you haven't seen the other video this is just a way of doing this rather than using rippers levels um, and as much as I do love that and I'm more than happy to use levels um, in some ways this simplifies things and because the intention is to package up this um, whole adventure for you guys to go get your copy of Curse of Strahd um, import this module and just run with it the fewer mods we have attached to it the less problems you're going to encounter as simple as that um, so beyond Monk's active tile trigger, I'm going to try and get rid of as many modules as I can, which means I'm having to kick levels to the curb for this purpose. It's the only reason I'm removing levels. Right, humiliation time, uh, because I need to build walls, uh, and this is when you guys have the most fun mocking me for my inaccuracy with these things, and... And and I know that some of you find it really frustrating because there are other tools out there that can help and make this easier uh, and I don't use them and I know it winds some of you up. <laughs> oh dear. I guess it's my little game that I play. Uh, again, need to just check the module. That looks like that stairs down. That might be a secret door there, but I will check the module on that. I might not check it before finishing doing the map in this video. But like a lot of the time, you know, I do make mistakes in here and you guys point them out. But actually, I always go back and look at the module afterwards. Now, it, doing this offline without you guys, I would be looking at the module as I go. But uh, you don't want to sit there while I read the module um, and check little facts and things like that. That's really boring. So I tend to skip through, chuck these things in, make all of the errors, wait for my quality assurance officer in the comments to point out where I missed a door, because I always miss something. Uh, there we go. All right, that's the lower floor done. Um, or rather the walls, let's stick those windows in nice and easy. And with that snapping, it's just really easy. And this one's beautifully aligned exactly to the grid. Uh, so all of those windows are going in without drama and now I can move straight onto the doors and like I said same with anything else uh, I will go back um, and look at the module afterwards to find out if any of these doors are locked or secret doors or anything like that um, so stop roasting me in the comments even if I deserve it there's a door, a door, a door I've missed some walls there haven't I I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> I've spotted it. 
<laughs> got him. <laughs> Finally, I actually managed to spot one. Um, oh, I'm going to miss something else. You guys will tell me. I know you will. <laughs> and I appreciate you for it. Okay, let's move on to this other floor then. Um, you know, this is... I didn't want to do that, did I? Uh, this is really actually quite quick to do when you get into it. When it maps with the with the, the with the grid itself, just that grid snapping, it, it's actually really really quick. It's when it doesn't or that um, off centered from the grid, it can be a bit frustrating or not frustrating. That's not the right word. It just takes a bit longer. You need a bit more care and attention. Having said that, of course, you know, there's me saying care and attention. I will have missed something, obviously, obviously. No, uh, no, 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 no. And sometimes I get quiet when I'm doing this because I'm trying to concentrate. Ah, <laughs> oh dear. Slapping them all in. Lovely jubbly. Nice and easy. All these little annexes and things. Internal walls, have I missed any? I don't think so. I will spot them in a minute. Windows, let's smack in those windows again. And once again, checking the modules, things like this. Is that a curtain in front of it? Um, I will double check that to make sure that these windows are openable. Um, if they've got curtains that are closed, then I will obviously update the windows to sh not let light and sight through. Okay, smacking in some doors. How do I get into here? What have I done? I'm going to assume there's a secret door somewhere. There's no door into that room. Um, so that's the kind of thing that really points out that maybe I've made a mistake or I've missed something. Uh, again, I'll check the module afterwards. Uh, and I will try and make those corrections before you guys point them out because it's a little game I play. Can I fix the problems before you guys get to them? Now we've got these stairs here. We've got this railing around the stairs um, that you can see over, but you don't want them just walking off of there. So we're going to put in... Uh, one of those invisible walls because it blocks them from moving so they go round the stairs as they should do rather than uh, just hoiking it and just jumping over the banister of course they can if they want to if they're telling me they're jumping over the banister just wonder if there's any invisible walls here no that's all good um, if they're jumping over the banister that's fine I can just move their token and chuck it down there and then do what I like with regard to any roles like acrobatics um, depending how high the stairs are etc right this is simple isn't it let's whiz this one on Whee! don't ask what that noise was <laughs> okay cool now again we've got one of these you know it looks like you come down the stairs you go round so I'm going to use those invisible walls again here not ethereal invisible uh, just so the players it's very obvious that they uh, need to move around the stairs rather than just jumping off. Now again, we have an area here where there's no way to get into it. There's got to be a secret door or something like that. So I will check the module on that. And uh, yes, I spotted that gap. Ah <laughs> oh dear. All right. So uh, another quick check here. If I whiz around the outside, actually the best way to check best way the easiest way to check is I'm going to turn off my grid now um, there we go because it looks much nicer is I'm going to create my interior area so that I can lower the light level in here um, but also do the uh, the weather for the weather mask thing so if I go to my regions I'm going to add a new region and I'm going to just call this interior as I always do because then it's really obvious what that's doing, at least obvious to me, even if not to you. And I want to add my shapes on. Now I want to grab my wall select tool and I want to do that. And I want to go add and bush. And that's a really good way of knowing if I've managed to seal everything, I've not missed a window. So I've added that on. Uh, now I'm going to do the same for this floor, bosh. And I've got two different shapes now that are both interior, um, but I've got, they're both part of the same region. So when I do this, I've now got three different shapes. They're all green because they're all the same region. It's really nice, easy way to do that. Um, let's update that region and see if the, uh, no, it held, good. Sometimes it loses the name. Let's put the behavior in. So adjust that lighting. I'm gonna take that down and I'm doing mine to about 0.2 for interiors for, this adventure uh, and I want to darken it 
So that dark, that interior is slightly darker than the outside. Um, and it means I can use the overall up here. I can use the transition to darkness, daylight things uh, for when it gets night time and the inside will always be slightly darker than the outside regardless of how bright it is at suppressed weather. That's the other one I want on there. Yes, please. Thank you very much. So for this scene, if I go to lighting, I'm going to put global illumination on it. Um, but I'm also going to adjust the darkness level slightly. Uh, Drasimo, thank you. Um, I can adjust the darkness for the whole scene, obviously I can, and the inside will be then darkened a bit more than that, but I'm not going to do that at this point. Ambiance, let's stick on our, uh, where are we? We're in Vlaki, so probably don't actually want fog in here. I'm going to put rain, I tend to have it, uh, Barovia, the village of Barovia, it's always foggy and misty because of where it is. Uh, Velaki is a little bit further out. I tend to have the weather a bit more miserable as in you know, it's raining and stuff rather than the Ravenloft uh, mists if you like. But of course I can change that at any time. So just to confirm we've got no rain indoors. We've got no rain indoors here which is what we're good and if you look out this window you can see it on the roof below and of course we don't want now this is a bit weird for this one because this is all underground so actually what we could do for this to make this a bit more sensible is I could uh, I don't want to draw a whole new region let me modify this one uh, go to shapes I could actually on here I think I can do it this way I think I can just draw it's gonna do a whole new region yeah, I didn't want it to do a whole new region. I wanted to add a shape on, but it tends to only want to do it um, for the start. But that's fine. That's fine. Let's call this underground. Uh, it's not a big deal. These regions, because they're built into Foundry, they're very efficient on resources, which is important. Let me update that. So on this one, I can just go straight to behaviors. I've already got my shape in there, and I can just go, look, it's pressed by the warrior. Because it's weird having it raining in the rocks. All right, cool. And now, one thing I forgot to do with my walls, of course, I mentioned it when we were building the maps, um, but I've not done it here. We're gonna take a plain wall. We're gonna go over here, and we're gonna stretch that all the way across there. So all that means is any player on the edge of this map can't see what's down here. It looks like it's the edge of the map for them, uh, and they certainly can't walk between those scenes. Now the join between these two is slightly less easy to see, probably for you guys, especially with YouTube compression, uh, but the maps join exactly there. And again, with that snapping on, it's nice and easy to get a good straight line. So any actors in here cannot see what's going on down there, even if there's other characters there, as long as they've not got shared vision. Lovely. So uh, we need to do some uh, other bits and bobs. We've got lots of lights in here, haven't we? So let's do some lights now again. Um, if I want to keep consistency, I don't always, I do mix it up. But if I want to keep consistency, I can come into another place. This one's got levels on it still, of course. I can come into another place and go, that light there, that's what I want. I can copy that, so Control C, you can see it says I've copied it. I can go back to my scene here uh, and I can just, <laughs> I, can, I can Control C instead of Control B. Ah, professional way. Where was I? Burgermaster's Mansion. Put the levels on, go back to the ground, select the light. That's the correct light copy it I leave these things in because I know full well hang on let me concentrate draw V right okay <laughs> I leave these things in because I know full well that you guys do this as well um, and pretending that I'm something special and that I don't make these mistakes is ridiculous <laughs> so why would I edit that out and pretend I'm a genius I ain't fooling any of you am I so let's not even bother uh, okay, good, right, and there's a lamp in there. So you've seen me do this before. We're just copying and pasting lights. It's exciting content, isn't it? Uh, slap that one in. And again, I'm trying to line them up so that when the players look at them, the light is coming from the lamp image. It's not like hanging out to one side. And if you're wondering like, well, how do you get them to line up? 
Uh, I'm just pasting them in and of course it wants to snap to the grid which isn't aligning properly. By holding down shift I can precision place that. So I'm just pasting it down shift and then moving that to uh, a better place so that it sits where it needs to. Mustn't forget that there are lamps outside. Now depending on the weather will depend on what lights are on. If it's night time there will only be lights on in rooms that are being used. Um, you've heard me talk about this before. My philosophy is why the hell would you burn lanterns in a room you're not using? That's a waste of fuel. Now you could argue places that are where they're much more wealthy and they might have servants moving around. They might have more torches, lamps on, etc. Um, than other places. But certainly if you're looking at the peasants' places, um, you know, your average Joe, how often do you just go decide to go down the shops and leave all your lights on? I mean, you might by mistake, but you don't, it, but mostly you'd want to turn them off, save that power, save that money. Because um, you'd be slightly bonkers to not, not to, wouldn't you? <laughs> just, you know. Uh, unless maybe if you're solar powered you might decide that actually it doesn't matter because it's the sun uh, right, any lamps around here? no, we've got a dark corner, there's a desk here um, I'm, I mean that might be an inkwell with a with a quill um, i would probably turn that into a candle because it, again it's one of those things you've got a desk here that's low, miles away from the lamp you're going to have your back to it so you're only going to ever try to be writing in your shadow it doesn't make sense will the players notice that? Probably not. I will. That will drive me absolutely potty because it doesn't make sense. And for the sake of just putting one extra light in, why would I not do that? Yes, those things do annoy me. <laughs> Somebody said in, in one of the other videos, uh, oh, I think it was Drazimo talking about the um, poisonous snake. And it's like, <laughs> that is, it's not poisonous, it's venomous. <laughs> <laughs> man after my own heart those things wind me up as well it's like that's just get it right it's not difficult venomous is not the same as poisonous right any lanterns down here i get way off track as usual oh these look like flaming torches i'm going to paste this one in um and then i'm going to edit this light to be a bit more um flaming torch like so i'm going to say that dim is actually going to be uh going to be 10 and that is going to be five. Let's, how does that look? Um, i also going to put up the color intensity a bit more on that. Uh, and I'm going to look at the torch animation and I'm going to tuck that up. So a flickering torch uh, is going gonna, is gonna to be more, uh, higher animation speed. It's going to flicker more than a lamp on a wall. That's my logic there. Um, agree with me or disagree with me. That's entirely up to you. I'm not sure how much experience as a community we have with actual real life flaming torches, right? <laughs> uh, and I'm going to use that same for my candles. So we've got candelabras here. And again, I'm going to go around and turn off almost all of these lights. Uh, and they may never... Okay, I'm going to check the module for this room because that might actually be uh, legitimate for there. Um, but I'm going to be checking uh, the module again for uh, for anything where lights should be on. Now this looks like that you get down to there through these cellar steps over here. So we'll need to look at putting in a region for that. Right, let's go find, around and find all of our candlesticks. And make sure we're sticking lights for the candlesticks. Yes, it's ridiculously bright in, these, in some of these rooms right now. Um, but again, see there's things like this. Ooh, 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 look. I missed one. There we go. That's why it's also useful to go back around, right? Copy my candlesticks again. So some of these you might find like, oh yeah, it's a bit weird, but there's a, uh, a chandelier above the dining table, and it's possible that's what's um, what you have with the um, with that desk that I was complaining about is being very dark and in the corner. They may say, yeah, there's a chandelier directly above this desk, this one here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that whatever that is. I'm going to make that a candle. Uh, and if it turns out there's a chandelier, I'll just change that light to be something chandelier like. Um, it's not clear that these are candles on these, but it's a bedside light, right? You get up in the night and you need a whiz. Hello, got a face in there. Uh, you get up in the night and you need a wee wee. I've just noticed this the corner cupboard. I'm going to come back and do those walls. I don't think I did them. 
Uh, oh, that's on the floor above. Oh no, that's the that's the angle from the lighting from that light. That's fine. Um, let's check those walls. Oh, we're here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That because the grid is too big, that's not going to snap where I want it to. So I need to turn that off and have to do it the old ways and make sure that that is going to join from there, which is great. And that's a door. So let's just slap that in as a door across there. Brilliant. And you saw that instantly go dark because that door is closed and it's not letting the light in. It's now light in here, dark in here. Okay, that's what we want. Beautiful. All right. Um, we started down there, didn't we? We've done up here, including any of the candles we could find, and we did all the candles here. So this is kind of, is it? Right. <laughs> Before I go back to the adventure module, what I do want to do is uh, check everything. Um, I've got no tokens put on at the moment. I will check the adventure module, put the NPCs in and things like that. Tile controls. I've got no tiles that I'm aware of that I need to do for this. No drawings required. We've done all the walls. I think, why is that one red? Did I accidentally, did I accidentally lock that one? Oops, closed, thank you. Um, again, some of these might be locked. I will check the module and find out. Uh, the lighting, obviously we've just done all that lighting and I haven't got any ambient sounds. I'll tell you what, I've not done fireplaces. So again, if I go back to the Burgermaster's Mansion, uh, go back to my lights and I find some of those fireplaces. Hello? Where's my fireplaces? Why have I not got any fireplaces in the Burgermaster's Mansion? That's a bit weird, isn't it? Um, we can certainly go to... That's, have I gone mad? Why are there no fireplaces in this house? Are they only on the first floor? How very strange. I didn't notice it when I was building it. This entire building has no fireplaces. Hmm. That's the kind of thing I would like to think my players would pick up on and go, hang on a minute. Oh, there is a fireplace over here, but I've not put... Is that the only fireplace in the whole... It is. One fireplace for the whole of this house. It must be freezing. How very strange. Uh, where else have I got fireplaces? I've got them in lots of places. Um, you know, even the peasant's hovels have got fireplaces. I didn't put one in there either. I've got nuts. I've got nuts and just not put fireplace lights in. Uh, yeah. Ground floor. There's an amazing lack of fireplaces. It's another freezing cold place to live. I'm oh, sorry, I've got massively... <laughs> I got massively distracted. Um, that's just... That's that's thrown me a bit. It's why 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 are there no fireplaces? Let's go to the blue water in. I'm sure we did some here. Uh, let's bring out those lights. This ground floor. We got a fire. Oh oh oh! My lights are. Oh no, they're not. There's a lamp. I've, I've been missing out fireplaces. Right, so I'm going to go back and fix all of those, but what's important is that we're, this is the one we're, we're focusing on, isn't it? That's really confused me. Right, so I'm going to put in a new light source here for the fireplace. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I tend to have these um, quite bright because there's quite a lot of fire there, certainly a lot more than a candle. So we're going to go with bright of 10, uh, dim of 20. Um, we are going to choose a colour for them. Um, and we're going to go something a bit more orangey for that. Uh, which we're not going to be able to see very well because the other light's on around it. Yeah, a bit more orangey. We want to put an animation on there. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to, uh, you know, we've got flickering light um, that we can absolutely use. Um, but to be honest, the torch one is best for all of these because they're all naked flames. Look at that. Uh, let me take that off. Hello? 
Oh, there we go. So that's, that's much more appropriate for a roaring open fire. I'm going to turn down the speed a little bit. That's a bit, little bit excessive. Um, perhaps put that back to about there. Yeah, so we've got that nice warm kind of glow throughout the room. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that um, for that fireplace as well. Any other fireplaces here? Yes. Let's get the fireplaces. And then in theory, we've got fireplaces that match. Uh, okay, only on that side. There's no fireplace for this room. You get to be cold. There's no lights. There's no fireplaces. It's like, wow. Okay, glad that's not my bedroom. <laughs> it's right in the middle of the house, so perhaps it doesn't need a fireplace because it's going to be probably, you know, warmed by uh, just by the fact that the rest of the house is surrounding it. Okay. A bit of a ramble, wasn't it? Um, right, the last thing we need to do at this point before returning to there is, apart from turning off a whole bunch of these lights, I'm going to leave these lights on for now while we do this, um, just because it makes it, uh, obviously, lighter uh, for you guys watching. Um, what do I need to do? I need to do the regions for the stairs. So, again, if you haven't seen me do this, really, really easy. I'm going to take a square region, and I'm going to pop that at the top of these stairs. Um, and these these stairs going up are actually going to arrive uh, actually not going to do that I'm going to put it get rid of it a new one uh, oh, stupid boy it's much easier put the snapping on I'm going to do it in the midway up the stairs and there's a reason for that because it's going to join with these stairs and I'm going to have you go halfway up the stairs and then you teleport to halfway up the stairs. And then when you're going down the stairs, you're going to get halfway down the stairs. It's going to teleport you to halfway down the stairs. So you're going to go between those two regions. Now, when it comes to regioning names, I have talked about this before. What makes sense is these stairs are going up to here. So the place I want to land is going to be called up to first floor. And when I go down, we're going to land at this one, so this is going to be down to ground floor. Down to ground floor. Uh, and that will make sense in a moment, and I'll show you why. I'm going to update that region. Sometimes it likes to lose, leave, lose the name, uh, and I'm going to leave that right there. And then I'm going to do my next region. Make sure I've got nothing selected, because I don't want to add a shape to that one. We're going to put our other one in here, and then this is going to be called up to first floor sorry americans remember i'm in i'm in britain we do ground floor first floor second floor um, whereas you guys tend to do first floor second floor third floor so um yeah if that's confusing for you tough <laughs> that, that's on you <laughs> not taking responsibility for it i'm going to change the color of this one just because otherwise i've got two green regions there which is just going to confuse me there we go that's better so what do I want to do to make these stairs work? I'm going to, I'm only going to show these stairs. I'm not going to do the other ones on here. Um, I would do the same for the cellar as well. But uh, for this, how do we want to do it? So if we are on the region up to first floor, so if we're on the first floor and we walk on this, we want it to take us to this region here, which is on the, gr no, got it the wrong way around. That one's on the ground floor that one's on the first floor okay so for the behavior for this one i want to add the behavior of teleport okay and where do i want to teleport it from so if i hit this region i want to teleport to this region right oh god which one am i on up to first floor yes <laughs> As it gets a bit confusing. So to make sure I've got the right destination tag on the down to ground floor, I'm going to click that and you can see the blue there is copied that and then I can paste that in. And the thing that I realized uh, last time is you need to click that and it's now destination down to ground floor. Uh, I can save that, thank you very much. Now going the other way, so for this region here, we're going to be going up, aren't we? So the behavior here is going to be teleport token, and we're going to teleport the other direction. So I'm going to copy this one and stick it in this one. 
Okay. Uh, our, and I forgot to tick the allow choice. I want the allow choice. Um, by doing the allow choice, so edit this one to tick that as well, it's going to ask them before they move. So let's pick any character we like. Um, not a draft horse, that would be silly. Uh, if, if we grab this person here. Uh, when we try to move on to that region, it's going to say, do you want to teleport to the name of the destination? So that's why the first floor one is called up to first floor in the Watcher house. Yes. When this person hits this one, we want to be going down to the ground floor. So it's going to ask, do you want to teleport to whatever that region's name is? That region, I have called it down to ground floor. So it now says, do you want to teleport this character down to the ground floor in the Watcher house? Yes, I do. Okay, so they work perfectly. So that's how we set that up. Um, and it is, you saw, it's confusing to get those names right, um, but you'll get into the habit of it. And if you get it wrong, you just change it. <laughs> so I'm gonna call this video to an end here because it's, uh, it's getting on a bit. I need to add in these stairs here region that I'm going to do, and I need to add in whatever is happening over here and obviously check the module for anything I've missed with regard to locked doors, secret doors, because you know, you can go up these stairs, yeah, fine. What's you know, you can come in here, fine. That's probably a secret door um, in the cloakroom here. So I need to just check all of those, what's locked and things like that. And then of course, look at the NPCs and create those. I may already have some of those NPCs created because I just went and created a whole bunch of them at the beginning uh, just to, well, just because I was on a creating images um, thingy. Something else I've just realized that I need to do, Blood on the Vine, Burgomaster's Mansion, the E6 Tower Door, um, all of those I've got, I'm showing in navigation, um, and I don't want to do that. Uh, obviously I've got to go back and look at those fireplaces, haven't I? So what else have we got up there? The Burgomaster's Mansion, thank you very much. Ooh, E3 Burgomaster's Mansion. Ah, that must be the Bavaria one blood on the vine and it's because I went back and I was changing these um, for the levels thing I also want to make sure that background is black thank you very much um, the Durst house see because I, I changed all the Durst house to make sure all of this was uh, on that you know what I'm talking about so all of that is on the same map oh look there's my party at the moment my live my live game because this is my live world um, so the only one that should be up there is the one I'm actually in at the moment, the Durst House and the Study, which it is. That's good. It's things like that that annoy me when I miss them. Um, and I end up in a game and go, oh, God. and I did it with the Death House. And they were in the Death House. And up the top there, it said Death House. And one of the players immediately went, this place is called the Death House. That's a bit worrying. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, and that's why I've changed it. Although my folder's called Death House, my scenes are called Durst House. Um, to try and you know I don't want to I don't want to give them spoilers right watch a house is built uh, just need to uh, add in all the flavor and everything else uh, and turn off all the lights I don't need and do those stairs regions so thank you very much for watching I very much appreciate it uh, I hope this has been interesting I know some of you really enjoy these builder videos a lot of you kind of don't that's absolutely fine of course leave a like leave a comment uh, if you're not subscribed, please do so. It's great, and you can keep up with what we're doing as we build out the entire Curse of Strahd, because we are doing the whole lot. I just have to stay ahead of my, my actual group that are running through Curse of Strahd at the moment. Uh, lots of little tips and tricks and things when we encounter little problems or things that we need to make work. Um, we do those as we go. So, uh, yeah, subscribe and hit the bell icon. You'll be reminded of the copious amounts of videos that I tend to produce. Um, we're quite verbose on this channel. Uh, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Thank you for watching.